Hello and welcome to another session of Let's Learn German. I hope we revise the contents of the previous session and you're ready to learn something new and interesting today. In this session, we are going to do another category of prepositions called two-way prepositions or in German we call them Wechsel Präpositionen. Wechsel means change or exchange. Well, as you can see from the English meaning, two-way prepositions, well, they are called two-way prepositions because they either are in accusative or in dative. Yes, that is the main feature of these prepositions. Till now, you have done accusative prepositions and dative prepositions. Well, this is a category of prepositions which at times are either accusative or dative. Now, let us see some other features of these prepositions. These prepositions become accusative when there is a movement by noun or pronoun and that is asked with the question wohin. Wohin means to where. So, as you can see from this diagram, here there is a change of position from A to B by a noun or a pronoun. In this case, we ask the question wohin and the preposition which is going to be used here will be in accusative. The other feature of this preposition is that it becomes dative when there is no movement by noun or pronoun or the movement in, is only in one fixed place. So, for that we have the W question wo and as you can see from the diagram there is no movement the body or the noun or the pronoun is it one place fixed under in this area and in that case it becomes the dative preposition. So, remember the W questions here we have wohin which is accusative and wo which is dative. You know that in either dative or accusative prepositions the article changes that is the noun or the pronoun changes its form. So, in the same way here also the article would change. Now, let us look at the prepositions which are called two-way prepositions or Wechsel Präpositionen. There are nine prepositions. Now, let us look at number one. Number one, the preposition is called hinter. Please repeat after me, hinter. Number two, it is an. Please repeat after me, an. Number three, the preposition is called neben. Please repeat after me, neben. Here at number 4, we have the preposition auf. Please repeat after me, auf. Number 5, we have the preposition unter. Please repeat after me, unter. In number 6, we have the preposition Zwischen. Please repeat after me. Zwischen. At number 7, we have the preposition for. Please repeat after me. For. At number 8, we have the preposition in. Please repeat after me. In. At number 9, we have the preposition über. Please repeat after me. Über. Now, let us look at these prepositions once again. Hinter, an, neben, auf, unter, zwischen, vor, in, über. Now, before we start the Wechsel prepositions individually, I would like to tell you something about the verbs. You know what verbs are and you know that in German there are infinity verbs that means the verbs which are un unconjugated and they have an en at the end. Now, there are verbs which are at times accusative and dative and well, this also affects the prepositions 
and also the nouns or the pronouns and it also transforms the article. Now let us look at certain common verbs either in accusative or in dative which are usually associated with the vexal prepositions. However, the list of verbs which I am going to mention here is not the complete list. You may encounter other verbs which could be either dative or accusative with in course of time. Now let us look at the verbs. Now here I have written verben mit accusative that means verbs which are accusative. Now let us look at the verbs. The first verb is stellen which means to place something, hängen which means to hang something, setzen which means to seat someone, legen which means to put something somewhere, fahren you are familiar with this verb is either means to drive or to travel, gehen you are also familiar with this verb which means to go, laufen is the verb which you are familiar with which means to run. What I intend to mean by these three dots is that the list is endless, it can go on and on. Now let us look at the verbs again, stellen, hängen, setzen, legen, fahren, gehen, laufen. Please repeat after me once again, stellen, hängen, setzen, legen, fahren, gehen, laufen. Now let us look at the verbs with dative which I have written as verben mit dative. Now the verbs here are stehen which means to stand, hängen which is a verb from the previous category, hängen which also means to hang but it is in this context in a different meaning, sitzen to sit, liegen something is lying somewhere, sein you are already familiar with this verb to be, bleiben which means to remain, wohnen which means to stay or to live, and arbeiten which means to work. Well, you are familiar with the verb sein, bleiben, wohnen and arbeiten and as I told you the list goes on, it continues. Now let us look at the verb hängen. As I told you in accusative it means to hang something, hängen it means that something is hanging or something is hung somewhere. So when we say to hang it means that the action is happening only at one place or if there is no movement. Did you find these verbs and the prepositions difficult? Well, do not worry, we would work with these prepositions and verbs in a very focused manner and I am sure you will be able to understand the prepositions in a much better way. Let us look at all the vexal prepositionen once again with their meanings which are somewhat closer to them in English. Now we have here the preposition at number 1 which is hinter which means behind. We have the preposition an which in English could either have the meaning at, on top of or to. At number 3 we have the preposition neben which could either mean next to or beside. At number 4 we have the preposition auf which means either on, on to, to. At number 5 we have the preposition unter which could mean under, underneath, beneath. Now at number 6 we have the preposition swishen which means either between or in between. At number 7 we have the preposition for which means in front of. At number 8 we have the preposition 
in which can either mean inside or the English in like the here in or into or to and at number 9 we have the preposition uber which could either mean above or over. As I have told you that prepositions can have different meanings in different context. Well, as you can see from the English equivalence of these prepositions, these prepositions can have different meanings in different contexts and they could be either accusative or dative. Therefore, it is very important to understand the basic functions. Now, we would look at each prepositions carefully and try to understand their meanings. However, before we start the prepositions, let us do a small fun game where we can understand these prepositions in a better manner. Are you ready to play with me? Now, please repeat the way I do the action. We are going to do the preposition hinter, which you know means behind. Now, take your hand and keep it like this. This means hinter. Let us do it once again. Take your hand and keep it behind your head. Now, you have the preposition hinter. Now, let us go to the other preposition un. Again, please repeat after me the way I do it. Take your hand and keep it like this, touching your ear. Now, you have the preposition un. Let us do it once again. Take your hand and bring it close to your ears and then touch your ear with this hand. You have the preposition un. Now, let us do the preposition neben. Neben, you know, means next to or beside. Now, take your hand and bring it close to your ears. Don't touch your ear with your hands. This is neben. Now, remember, when you are touching your ear with the hand, like this, it becomes un. When you are not touching it, it becomes neighbor. Let us do it once again. Bring your hand and just hold it closely to your ear. And here you have the preposition neighbor. And when you touch your ear with your hand, you get the preposition un. Don't get confused between un and neighbor. Now, let us do the preposition auf. Auf is done like this. Please raise your hand and keep it on the top of your head. Touch your head with your hand. This is auf. Auf means on top of etc. Now, let us do this preposition auf once again. Raise your hand and place it on the top of your head. Touch your head with your hand and there you have the preposition auf. Now, let us practice the preposition unter. Unter, you know, means under, underneath or beneath. Now, to practice the preposition unter, again, raise your hand and keep it under your face like this. Here you have the preposition unter. Let us practice it once again. Take your hand and keep it like this. You have the preposition unter. Now let us practice the preposition zwischen. 
the preposition zwischen means between or in between. Now to practice this preposition, take both your hands and place them like this so that your face is between your hands. Let us practice the preposition zwischen once again. Raise your hands and now your face should be between your hands. Now let us practice the preposition for. Now raise your hand. Keep it like this. This is for which means in front of. So remember this is for and this is hinter, hinter means behind, for means front. Let us practice this preposition once again, for, hinter, for, hinter. Now. Let us practice the other preposition which is in. In you know means inside, into, to. Now in means like this. So raise your hand, take the finger and point it towards the inside of your mouth. So it means in. Now let us practice the last preposition which is uber. You know the meaning of uber could be above. Now take your hand and keep it on the top of your head. Don't place it on the top of your head. Just keep it like this. This is uber. Remember the preposition uber is applicable when you just keep your hand on top of your head. When you keep your hand and place it on your head that means it is auf and when you are not touching then it is uber. Remember auf is this, uber is this. I hope you had fun practicing these prepositions. Now let us practice all the prepositions once again but somewhat faster. Now let us practice these prepositions once again together. Ready? We have hinter, we have an, we have neben, we have auf, we have unter, we have zwischen, we have for, we have in and the last uber. Let us practice once again. Hinter, an, neben, auf, unter, zwischen, for, in, uber. So did you enjoy this little game? Now one of our students will again demonstrate these prepositions for you. Hinter, an, neben, auf, unter, zwischen, for, in, uber. So with the demonstration given by the student, I hope you learnt the Wechsel Prepositionen or the two-way prepositions. For today's session, please revise these prepositions by again doing them in the front of a mirror. 
If you repeatedly do them, you would be able to understand them and also place them in different contexts. Also, learn the verbs which either take accusative or dative. In the next session, we are going to deal with each vexal preposition or two-way preposition in a detailed manner. Till the next session, please revise everything what we have done till now. And as I always say, auf Wiedersehen, tschüss.